Welcome back to another episode of 5 a.m. Theology. Today's scripture that we're going to look at brings up a host of things, Chris, that we could discuss. It's the passage where Jesus tells the Sadducees that we will be like the angels. Mm. And Chris, my first reaction is that this is a really good time to reiterate how carefully we need to study scripture. This passage brings up a whole host of questions. Will we have wings? Will we be sad that we're no longer married to our earthly husband or wife? Are all angels male? And that's why they're not married. There's a mountain of false teaching about this verse, a mountain. We talked about last week about God moving mountains. He needs to move the mountain of the false teaching on this. Yeah, that's one I'd like to see tossed in the sea and maybe yeah. some of the people that teach it with him. <laughs> terrible. That's not right. Part of the problem is like many scripture passages that get massacred by false teachers, the one verse about being like the angels isn't even the main point of the passage. How often do they rip out one verse, they rip it out of context, and it's usually the slightly mysterious verses that tend to get the attention of most people. And Often these make us miss the most important point. So what is the main point of these verses that include being like the angels? And then we'll maybe get to some of those questions. But, you know, let's look at this context, Rose. On the heels of the Pharisees trying to trap Jesus with a question about taxes, another Jewish religious group, the Sadducees, also try to trap him with a question. The Sadducees were a first century Jewish group that only believed the first five books of the Bible. They based all their theology on that. Since resurrection from the dead wasn't explicitly taught in those books, they didn't believe that there would be a resurrection. So they posed this pretty unlikely scenario to Jesus, and they're hoping he won't be able to answer it. Silly Sadducees. Silly Sadducees. Their question stems from the Mosaic law from Deuteronomy 25, 5 to 10, where a man was to marry his brother's wife if his brother was to die without an heir. The first offspring from that second marriage would be considered the heir of the dead brother so that his name wouldn't die out. So thinking to trap Jesus, the Sadducees ask, well, if a childless woman is married to seven brothers here on earth, marrying one after the other without any offspring, which one will she be married to when she gets to heaven? And Jesus gives him an answer. And here is what he says. Is this not the reason you are wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. And that's the end of what Jesus tells the Sadducees. So Chris, the main point of the whole section is that the Sadducees are wrong. They have bad theology. There will be a resurrection. They haven't trapped Jesus with their absurd question. Again, silly Pharisees, Sadducees, anyone who thinks they can trip up Jesus. Jesus points out their mistake by taking them back to the Pentateuch, the books they believed in, and showing them that they missed the implicit teaching about resurrection. It was right there in this teaching about the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The patriarchs of the faith are not dead. They're alive. God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. For that to be possible, there has to be a resurrection. Now, not every detail of the resurrection is spelled out entirely here, but implicitly, it's there. Exactly. And like we said already, when we're reading the Bible, we need to try not to get distracted by a part of scripture that seems more mysterious or more puzzling or that's more interesting to us. Always make sure that we're getting the main point of the passage by taking all of it in its context. 
It's not that we can't learn anything from these side points that may seem more interesting, but the main point is the main point. Exactly. We need to study our Bibles diligently. The Sadducees hadn't studied diligently, not diligently enough, and they got it wrong, as often happens. And always explain the implicit with the explicit. R.C. Sproul has a great fairly short video on this regarding Romans 10, 13. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And he talks about the everyone being the implicit. And we need to explain what everyone means by the explicit. And the explicit is all the scriptures that tell us who will call on the name of the Lord. In other words, the elect. He, that is an awesome video that explains this implicit and explicit stuff so if you get a chance to watch it you should when one part of scripture speaks in generalities and you want to know more specifics go look to scripture that talks about the same thing in more detailed specific terms but rose that still leaves lingering questions about today's passage that are important to believers even though they're not the main point of the passage will we be sad about not being married to our earthly husbands while well, rose i say no how do we know that? Well, if we go look at scriptures that talk about what's happening in heaven, are the angels and the saints who've gone before us sad? No. So Chris, what does it mean that we will be like the angels? The angels in the Bible sometimes looked fierce and scary. Sometimes they had wings. Is that what Jesus is talking about? Are we going to be fierce and scary? I think sometimes I look fierce and scary now. In People have told warnings. Me, I look mean. Despite all those false teaching books, all those died and I died and went to heaven and I saw my relatives with wings books. The answer is no. There's no teaching in the Bible that we're going to have wings or that we're going to look fierce and scary. So what are we taught? Well, we're going to be immortal like the angels. Jesus teaches that in Luke's version of this same scenario with the Sadducees immortality is what it means no more death and that fact alone makes this hypothetical scenario that's conjured up by the sadducees null and void leverite marriage was only made possible because death was a reality at the resurrection death won't be a reality any longer the focus of this passage is about resurrection and honestly resurrection is a fantastic subject for a believer to focus on it will set your mind on the things that matter as you study it. Absolutely. And right away, I was thinking of Paul's two letters to the Thessalonians. He does a yep. great job with talking about the resurrection. Yep. And that's a good place to end for today. Have a blessed morning, everyone.